Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this terrain painting tutorial. Uh, it's taking the uh, Hablock system here from Mad Gaming, the channel sponsors here, and I've been building up the terrain. I've already made a how-to uh, video for constructing uh, one of these. It's this one here, uh, and in that video we talked about magnetizing, tips for gluing together, and that's the result. Very impressive buildings, you can customize them. Uh, there's also all of these walkways and so on. And I hinted in the previous video that how to construct video about keeping the paint scheme as simple and as effective as possible. So we're working on doing a bit of experimenting, we're working on technique uh, that I think should be effective and crucially uh, quick as well. So that's how it looks. This is uh, the finished design here painted up. So introduced a couple of colors of this one as I'm painting my setup for sort of a, a desert terrain uh, mostly but I've introduced some other colors some gray and some red here so that I can use it with my other admec terrain like on a Martian landscape uh, and then I can also use it in an urban setting as well just for the introduction of a bit of gray you gotta be careful sort of what color scheme you go for if you go exclusively for one type of color scheme then it means that your terrain sort of restricted uh, where you can use it, what kind of setups you can use it for uh, if you don't want it to look out of place. So I've gone for kind of a mostly desert, but I reckon I could get away with using this in sort of an urban setting uh, and with my Martian Admech uh, terrain as well. So if I zoom in just to show you some of the details on this, just some of the techniques that we'll be looking at uh, here in this video. So just so you can see it there will be, you see some chipping effects that we've done. Uh, some of this rust as well, just to weather the whole thing. And uh, the different tones going on, there's sort of a dark brown tucked underneath, uh, this medium tone, and there's also sort of some desert yellow mixed in uh, with that as well. There it is on top. And you can see here, darker tones in here. And that's the effect there. And this was very, very quick to paint up. You see the ribbed effects here, I've picked that out with that grey and all the other effects just making that weathered kind of look. So that's the uh, effect that we're looking for uh, with this set. So pretty standard, that's one hablock there and then just, you know, gradually start building this up and you've got all the gangways and walkways to paint up with this style as well. Uh, you could interchange the colours that I introduce here, you can interchange them and just follow the techniques that I show you and then introduce your own colours. You can come up with an entirely different colour scheme. I might add some variety to this, I might do one batch uh, in a certain style and then change it around a little bit but sort of keeping the whole thing sort of as a, as a general uh, desert scheme. So the first thing we'll do is go through the materials that you'll need uh, for this painting tutorial. There it is an MDF, it does look nice, just an MDF but it needs to needs to be painted up uh, in sort of realistic colours. And the thing is with terrain, I don't want to go too bright. I want something that's uh, pushed into the background so that the emphasis is still on the miniatures. Uh, so these buildings will be there and then I'll add in, when I set the terrain up, I'll add in 40k accessories, boxes and barrels, some stones, lichen, palm trees and so on, and then that terrain should fit in just nice with the desert theme. So uh, I'll go through colors here and this this is a quick technique it didn't take me very long to paint that building at all very very quick and that's good because you want nice results of terrain and to get it onto the table as, as quick as possible um, so the way I've done that I'm presuming that 
most of you watching this video will not have an airbrush and so what I'm going to use to get the colours on is spray cans. So uh, Army Paint here, the first one is the leather brown. That's for our darkest colours here and I'll show you how to go about spraying the building uh, once we get going. So that's leather brown, the first one, that's your darkest tone. Then uh, Army Painter do a nice desert yellow, that's that medium kind of colour, great colour that one there. Uh, and then finally they do skeleton bone. So three shades, these spray quite nice and fine, it's almost like an airbrush, uh, not, not as superior as an airbrush but good enough for terrain uh, here, the, the spray usually comes out pretty good. So I'm literally going to do most of the colour work with spray cans, that's going to save tons of loads and loads of time you're not having to paint the entire building most of the work's been done by the spray cans and then you're just picking out some spot colors and that is a, a very quick technique mutatorum varnish just to finish off just to protect the building and seal everything in then for colors as uh, there's known oil for washes agrax surf shade uh, you can use that one that's not entirely necessary uh, seraphim sepia so if you're doing your rust uh, tones those streaky lines coming down the building I've used seraphim sepia if you want something a bit stronger you want stronger lines on that then by all means use the agrax surf shape I like the more rusty kind of effect so it's the seraphim sepia that I've used uh, Shabti bone then uh, dawnstone abaddon black corn red as for these Spot colours here on the on the on the door, for example, or the hatches on top. You can swap that out for any colour that you want. Um, yeah, you know, one way to paint this up would be to follow the same process that I show you here, but spray up using grey and put your rust colours on. Same kind of finish, but then change the colours here for uh, the door panels and so on. And then uh, still Legion drab is uh, another colour to use as well. So yeah, you know, quite flat tones, quite uh, subdued tones here, but that's what we want for terrain. We want it in the background, not as uh, being the focal point over and above the miniatures. So that's the colours I'm going to use. Uh, selection of brushes, and that's it, you pretty much. I know there's one other thing actually. Bit of sponge, just a sponge that I've, I've torn up here in a lump and just taken all the hard edges out of it. So it's got a nice kind of random shape. And I'll be using that uh, to create some of the, the edge effect on here. All right, so uh, just outdoors here, ready to do some spraying. Uh, this is one I sprayed earlier, but not happy with how it's turned out. That was with two tones uh, there. Um, so I'm gonna give this one a respray. It's a smaller building and it's all glued in place. This is gonna be a better uh, example of here of how to spray this up. So the first step is to use the leather brown. That's the darkest brown, first of all. So I'd, I've got the building upside down here because I'm wanting to spray uh, the darker tones underneath. So it's a case of just spraying around the building, not worrying about the top, I only want to spray from underneath to catch these darker tones and shadows. So, I'm going to run this colour around. It's not going to take very long at all. And just making sure I capture from underneath. And rotating around. Underneath. And the MDF seems to uh, soak up the spray paint just fine. A couple of coats and it's no problem at all. So, there it is, that's that bit done. And if I rotate back over, you can see it looks something like that. I've caught all the tones underneath. Uh, so that's your shadows all done for you, nice and quick. And then we'll now spray from on top, uh, facing down in this direction to paint the middle tone. So the building looking like that, and I'm going to make sure I spray at an angle coming down this direction. Don't want to spray straight ahead and spoil the shading that's already there. So spraying downwards. Now I don't want to do a solid coat here. I, it's it's mixing with the darker brown. I don't want it to take over entirely. You can see it there. The two colours are starting to merge together. And that's it. I'm going to leave it at that because I still want some of that brown showing just to keep the tone a bit darker. And then on top here, I'm aiming for the middle, but I'm not aiming for these corners. I want to leave them darker. And again, just catching the top. A little bit on top there, rotating around. Keeping my angle. 
and now it's looking something like that. Happy enough with that. So now it's looking like this. And if you go right underneath there, you can see the darker tones of uh, shading right underneath for you. And again here, something like that. Don't want to go too. I don't. I don't want the uh, colour to be solid here. I want it to blend in and merge with the darker brown that's underneath. So something like that. Then that's almost dry. The final colour is the skeleton bone. So again, I'm catching at an angle, and I'll go nice and sparingly with this one. So, again a little bit in the middle, like so, and then around again, so that you've got something looking like that, and if I roll it up here, you can see now the three colours have merged together, uh, and again the darker shades underneath, and the lighter tones on top, and that's just with the spray cans. All right, so I uh, did my best to show you whilst outside there, but I'll just run for it here again. Uh, that's the finished piece there, how it's come up. So if you look underneath, you've got darker tones running there uh, and then the lighter tones on top. That's just to do with the angle that you're spraying uh, with those three shades. So the first shade, that leather brown, you're spraying up underneath, so you can see the darker shade just there. You can spray a little bit on top if you want into things like the corners on top of the buildings uh, with that. Then that medium... Uh, tone which is uh, there's the dark one that color there then that medium tone at, at this angle going all the way around uh, and then sort of aim, when you spray on top aiming for the middle and it will fill that out mostly and then leave these areas more shaded uh, that's that one and then a final tone that's the uh, skeleton bone uh, a very light spray and these sprays come out quite fine it's almost like using their brush not quite as good but uh, good enough and these colors start to merge into each other and you get quite a nice uh, effect but use that for your final edging uh, so again it's pretty clear on this one you can see a darker tone running underneath all that hard work's been done for you you don't have to worry about painting it shading it uh, the sprays have done the hard work for you and you get some nice mixed tones going on here uh, with that one there that i've just resprayed, and then you can see it darker on top and the shade going into the corners and that's all to do with the way that you've sprayed the buildings i would say to try and keep the tones matching with each other you probably want to paint your building set all in one go if you can but you're gonna get a little bit of variety uh, but generally they're gonna match in pretty good and as for desert terrain that should fit in just nice with the battle mats and the terrain that I already have so it looks something like that I've done the same now with uh, the larger building like so and you see these different tones coming through that's the kind of variety that you want that natural kind of look very happy with how it's come out and, and almost you know, if you want to leave it at this stage and just stick that on the battlefield, it actually looks pretty good. So, you know, battlefield ready, just with the, uh, the clever use of sprays there, just to create your shading. And as I said, you've saved yourself tons of work. So now just a case of picking out some colors uh, and some other techniques, just some weathering effects. But you start seeing these buildings all next to each other and, you know, starting to get a pretty good setup here. So I'm excited with the progress. Uh, I've also sprayed up uh, one of the walkways, exactly the same process, uh, you can see the darker brown underneath and then just sprayed all of the angles uh, the same way as I did with the buildings. And that's all magnetised, so that's just going to stick on just like that and that's all toned in nicely there. So uh, we'll go on to a bit of painting now and again I'm going to show you some quick techniques uh, for covering large areas pretty fast. So three colours lined up, we're going to do this grey tone. But the key to save tons of time and for effect as well is not to just paint straight on a solid colour. You want to go for a washed out colour, which is going to be a lot quicker to paint onto the surface anyway. Uh, we're going to sort of pick out areas here. So we're not going to paint whole panels, uh, but we'll let those main areas be left to the effect that we've created with the sprays. And instead, we're going to try and pick out these uh, little accessories, window sills, and so on uh, that stick out. So I've got, I'm going to take a an older brush here, this is an older Games Workshop base coat brush. It's one that I've used, it's a bit old, but it's still generally neat enough to, to paint these panels. So I'm going to take some of this Dawn Stone, then I'm going to take some of the Abaddon Black, and then I'm going to mix it, not with water, but with the 
uh, non oil wash here. It just, I think it's a bit better than water. So, we're going to mix that in until we get that kind of shade. I think just looking at the a reference there from the other pieces of train, that's pretty good. Add in a bit more black so I'm going to mix this whole lot together. Use up all the grey and then water it down a little bit more. Like so. And then it's just a case uh, of, this is nice and watery, so it would have a really good flow to it. And I'm just going to paint one side. That's going on just nice consistency there. So paint one side, and I'm literally going to run along the top on all of these. So that one, that one, then we'll do this big one on top. So literally running all the way along the top of this. And just run it so I catch that whole panel. And then being careful, I want to be neat at this stage. And then I run along the top of this one. And then I run along the top of all those, and then when you're ready, just flip it over. And do the underside. So, just under here, and because I'm picking out smaller areas and I've got a really good flow to this, it's actually going nice and quick, like that, and then when you've done all the undersides, it's probably best to do all of the underneath, and then it's just a case of then catching the edges here, so that edge, that edge, and then just run the brush all the way along. And it doesn't have to be great to be any color that you want, but I'm just picking out these areas like so. So I'm gonna go around I had all of this model now and pick out that shade. Uh, so again, these smaller ones just run along the top here. Any mistakes, you can wash them off. I would just be neat at this stage, but you can still move pretty quickly and still be neat at the same time. But uh, whatever tone you choose to go for, I go for gray here. I think it's a nice color to add into this, but you can go for some other color if you wish. Uh, but just fill that all in and we've introduced another colour quite quickly onto the building. Alright, so I have that done. The building looks something like this now. So I managed to pick out the colours. Looks particularly effective on this ribbed effect here. Just highlights that. And along here as well. So you can pick and choose. You can do whole panels if you want. Um, you can do windowsills, frames, uh, whatever you choose. So I've sort of picked out these main bits here. But uh, I might vary it from one building to the next just to further uh, enhance the variety that you can get with these buildings. So that's that one done. The next colour, it's optional, it looks quite flat like that. I want to introduce a little bit of colour into it. So I've, I've gone for corn red, uh, but again you could swap that colour out and take whatever you wish. So it's a case of taking a bit of corn red and then uh, I'm going to mix it with Agrax Earthshade. Or you can use Sarah from Sepia or you can use water if you want, but I, I like the washes. Uh, they sort of help with the consistency of the of the paints. So I like to thin them uh, by using the Agrax Surf Shade and it will tone down that corn red just a little bit as well. So I, I've chosen to do the doors uh, and hatches uh, with this but again you can pick and choose uh, whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to dismantle this one here and just fill in one of these doors. So corn red, it wouldn't look right if you just put the paint straight on, you end up using up lots of paint as well. So I take that colour and then take the Agrax Surf Shade and mix it up to create a thinner colour because I want some of the other colour to show through some of the areas that I've sprayed just to show through so I'm just adding a bit more wash to that just to thin it down and again I really would be neat if, with this if you can you don't want to go over the edges so just being neat along here you can do the inside of the frame on this one because this window has been pushed for it's not solid entirely and again with this paint being thinned down so much it just flows really nice nice and quick so something like that and then and this colour is matching with my Admec terrain just nicely. So if I do want to combine the, the two sets together, the, the Games Workshop Admec terrain, uh, then I can mix it in with this, and oh, the two should look correct next to each other. Sort of echoing this colour just a little bit in this desert set. So that's that door filled in. 
rotating round, so maybe do the door as well. You can do the window sill, window frames if you wish, you could pick out other colours. But I am a bit wary of doing too much. I don't want to do too much here so this colour starts to dominate. I just want it just as a spot colour almost. Picked out. This whole door is going to be shaded in with this. Like so. But it's a nice, fast enough process. Just showing you here and then. Nice and neat. It's all marked out for it's all been laser cut here so you can see where to paint up to. Paint underneath. Got a mistake, just rub that off. And then just go nice and neat up to the edge. Like so. Something like that. So doors picked out in that red. And that's pretty much that's pretty much those colours done actually. So next, and again, you could leave it at that stage. It looks smart enough. Uh, but we're gonna go into some techniques, some weathering techniques now uh, for the next stage. Right, so uh, reds are done. You can see I've thinned it down a fair bit. So you're getting some of the original colour from underneath showing through. Just to go for more of a natural look. You can go for solid if you want, but I, I like the washed out kind of feel to it here. Just this weathered kind of look with the terrain. So one of the next steps, it looks all a bit too clean cut here. So what I want to introduce next, uh, and I've been doing this by the way, painting these bits in red. Just the handrails going around. I might alternate that, might do some bits in grey, but I uh, think red looks quite cool. Uh, just there. And then, so with this one, you can see this kind of almost chipped plaster kind of effect around here. You can see it running around here. It's very, very quick. So uh, to do that, not going to use a brush, going to use that piece of sponge that I talked about at the start. Uh, a lot of modelers doing terrain and so on would use this technique. It's nice and quick, very random as well. Make sure you cut yourself out. I pulled out a piece uh, from a square piece of sponge, just a sponge for cleaning the car. Uh, but torn out a piece and then just nipped bits off just to make, keep it nice and random when I blotch it on. Uh, the colour I want to mix is uh, the Steel Legion Drab. So I'm going to take some of that out of the pot, put it onto here, and then I'm going to mix it with the Agrax Earth Shade, which was one of these darker washes, mixing that together. You could add a tiny bit of black to it if you want. I think that's pretty good. It's it's up to you how dark you want to do this. So I'm going to take a bit of the sponge. There's some there, not too much. And I'm just going to put this on very sparingly to start off with. Yeah, that's going on alright. And it gives you very, very random results, which is what you're after here. And I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the darkness of that and the tone of that. See, that's very, very quick. And I'm just going to blotch into here, like so, a little bit on this edge. It actually started to run out of stuff, so I'm just going to dip it back in again and then work on this corner. A little bit running along here, catching this edge, catching this edge. And then a few spots, just random little, tiny little bits. There, I'm happy enough with that, where that's turned out. Pretty good. So, uh, I'm just going to rotate around and we'll do this bit. So, I'm taking it nice and slow here, but uh, you'll soon speed up with this. It's fast enough. So, yeah, really, that's very cool. The way that's very, very natural looking. You did this, if you did this with a paintbrush, it'd take you absolutely forever to do. So, nice and quick with a sponge. Pick up a bit more from the palette and stab it into that corner as well. Just trying to get a weathered, natural look. A few random spots here and there. And then, oh no, I'll do a little bit down here, a bit more down here. Something like that. And again, very happy with how that's come out. 
rotate it around. I'm just going to continue on. I might put a little bit up here, just a few random bits as well. Don't want this terrain looking too factory fresh, but a bit of randomization, a few spots of color, like so. Remember to tuck in on at the inside here, so catching it this way and on top. I think maybe, I don't know, where your feet might go. This is almost dried out. I'm just going to stab in some dirt and grime and around this hatch as well. I think it'll be a bit grimy where people have, oh, yeah, where it's people have gone in and out and used these hatches. A little bit of dirt and grime in there as well. Something like that, just to break up the sort of pure colour. But uh, no, I'm happy enough with that. Don't want to go too strong, not pure paint being stabbed on, but again, that watery kind of effect just to go for the more natural kind of look. But I'll finish this building off. I'm very happy with how that's turned out. All right, so uh, that's done. Looking something like this. Let me just zoom out a little bit just to show you the whole building. That's broken those edges up now. That's what a nice natural look. Yeah, and I've gone for that idea of wherever models have got out and walked, wherever you think someone might walk, the hatch opens, you know, grubby feet and so on, dusty feet, and just marking there. A little bit here because there's access points coming across here as well. Just to break up the cleanness of the roof just there and then around here. So nice bit of weather in that. Very, very quick. Even done a little bit on the walkways. Just stab the sponge all the way along, you know, where people are going to be walking along, making a mess and so on. So the next stage is to unite this together by doing a dry brush and just to crisp the whole thing up. So it's taking a shabti bone, pure shabti bone, don't need to mix it with anything. Uh, then I've got one of these brushes here, it's the Games Workshop large dry brush. Uh, I've got my palette here and it's a case of highlighting everything. So it's going to be all the edges here of this natural stone colour. Uh, also dusting up the red here and then also these grey bits as well, all receiving the same dry brush. Nice and quick, it just crisps everything up and unites it together uh, here, just adding a bit of a dusty effect. It's just a case of picking up some of this paint, stabbing it into the bristles, working it into the bristles, and then just being a bit cautious here, this is where the most paint is on the brush, so I'm just going to catch some of the, the main edges here. The rusty staining, I want to leave that till last because this dry brush will go over the top of that, I don't want to sp spoil that. So I'm just catching the main edges, just here, and then now with the brush is, brush is dried out a little bit, I'm going to catch the edges of this. Great. And the way this MDF terrain is, it's got hard edges on it, it's very easy to, to put the highlight on. And it brings that grey, merges that grey in with the, uh, the dusty colour of these walls. So it just unites the whole thing and just picks out all the detail for you. Again, nice and quick. Let's call the edge of that and it just brings the whole thing together. Things like the door, uh, crisp up the edges of the grey bits, the edge of the window frame here, and by the time you scuff the brush around, it's knocked the tone of that red down, and knock the tone of that red down, get it nice and dusty. It's going to be a desert kind of outpost here. So just scrubbing the brush in. And that's taken away some of the tone of that red. And you can go even stronger on that if you wish. As much or as little as you want. So again, more paint here. And again, just capturing, catching the main edges, even on your uh, natural stone colour here. Catching the edges of that. Just crisps the whole thing up. And then catching this grey. These window openings will catch the edges of that. This one these window sills. Do a little bit more on this door. That's better. Just to knock the tone of that down a little bit. Oh. Yeah, much happier with that. Let's just knock that down. Just a bit extra. Again around here, maybe show you how quick you can go. Just capturing all these edges. Working on the door. Swirling the brush around now, and it's the red's just picking up some of that. Yeah, it's much better. I'm happy with this red being subdued a bit more. Don't want it really strong. So, 
A lot of cases of learning as you go along. And I'm picking up a bit more paint, catching these edges. And then along here, it's a case of that quick. So nice and fast. And it just highlights that nicely, this edge. Done, then we back around to where we started. And then on top, uh, it's a case of catch catching these bits. And then I'm gonna sc scrub this hatch here. I just want to subdue this red. So just working the bristles in. Like so. And you can see a difference between the two. That's with the paint just on it, and then that's with the highlighting done. Much happier with it that way. So, just repeat the same across here. Like that, yeah. And again, very happy with how that's come out. So that's a lot better. And you can catch some edges around here. And I've not stopped the camera, that's done. So it's that quick, just to do that. So now what we've got with this building is we have some chipping effect done, very, very quick with sponge. Now the whole entire thing's been highlighted and it's been very, very quick to do that as well. And you're virtually done. Just a bit of rusty effect now. It's another great weathering technique that you can do. And again, it doesn't take too much time. So move on to that next. So what you're doing now is taking Sarah from Sepia and a brush here, it's sort of a, this is a Seed Studios brush here, it's a Artist Opus series, it's an O-sized brush. So it's a good tip on it, but it's not the smallest brush here. It's able to hold a fair bit uh, of the wash, but with a good tip on it. So just soak some of this up here. And it's a case of just a rusty effect. So, you know, the rain comes down or just the rust over time and I think it might drip down in this direction. So I'll put two of those next to each other. Just there if you can see it, like so. And the key is not to do too much because it'll look wrong if, and look too over the top if you do too much and it'll take you longer as well. So I think maybe a bit of rust is gonna drop down here. So I'm just working it in. One, two, and then I think some might come down here. So I'll run down a few from here, varying in size and length. It's another easy technique that really does help to make the terrain look nice and weathered. So that's gone not too well, so I'm just gonna rub that off. Start again. I'm gonna run down here. And I might do some on this endy bit. So starting point, and then drag the tip of the brush down till it ends at a sharp point. And you wanna go vertical, and keep the line straight running down. And I might do a little bit off this window sill coming off the edge here. Run down like so, and then maybe it's dripped and then it's overflown onto this. But just being kept, bearing in mind, you know, this is going to separate and these are going to get modelled up anyway uh, when I set up different games, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, but here I might just drip straight down onto the door over the top of that. So you want to do this after you've done that dusting technique because it was the dusting technique, will, the highlighting will scrub all of this out. So this is a finishing touch that you can do. I'm going to run a little bit under here, like so. And you're introducing another shade of brown, like a rust kind of effect. I'm going to run from this corner and run all the way down and a little bit there as well. But that's your kind of effect here. And then we've weathered that building up quite nicely. I'm actually virtually finished now. So I'm just going to go around uh, with the same technique around the entire building just to create this rusty weathered kind of look. All right, so done. Didn't take too long. Took about 10 minutes going around doing that effect. And I think that finishes it off just nicely. It makes it look like the building's actually been outside and has the elements uh, you know, causing damage here, chipping effect and so on. And it has washed out kind of look uh, here, that very industrial sort of feel to it. So easy to do, very easy technique to do. And you sort of combine all these techniques together and then it gives you the results that you see uh, just here. So. Uh, happy enough with how that's turned out. I'll apply the same technique to the walkways. This one's virtually done. A little bit of highlighting to do along here and a little bit of rust. There's not really anywhere to add that on. Um, that's streaky effect, so that's walkways virtually finished. Uh, and then it's just a case once it's all painted up, you can start building up your terrain. This is magnetized here. I uh, showed you in the previous video how to do that, and that just slots on there. The great thing about the magnetizing is that it will then stick up on these higher levels and you can start building up your walkways and steps and so on. The 
final stage for this, if you're happy with how it's turned out, is just to give it a spray, give it a light spray of Munitor and varnish, just to seal the whole thing in. You know, it's, it's got to be durable enough. Uh, you're going to be putting models on it and so on. Hopefully, hopefully use it in the years ahead. Um, so you want it to last as long uh, as possible. So I'll give it a light spray of Munitor and varnish, and that'll be the project finished. Let's think about accessories that you can add onto this. So when I set up a gaming table, uh, I'll set up the train like that. Then I'm going to place sort of the Games Workshop boxes and barrels and ammunition and spare weapons there'll be stones and lichen and palm trees and so on so that'll blend in really well other things you can add on uh, is your imperial propaganda posters there's a separate video for that on the channel so get a case of putting plastering posters all over this here just to make it really link in with 40k nicely you may not want to do that you may want to keep it neutral so you can use it for other gaming systems as well so if you're playing uh, something outside of 40k, so Infinity for example, uh, then you could leave off the 40k star uh, propaganda posters for example, but I reckon it's, I'm going to be using this for 40k so I may well stick a few posters uh, on this just to give it that nice 40k flavour. The other thing I've been thinking about doing, what's not on this, is uh, metallics, metal of some kind. So you could paint some of these as metal, but I, I think they're better in these neutral tones here. So to introduce a bit of metallic into this, uh, I've been thinking about using this stuff, big fan of this. This is the aluminium car body repair kit. You can get it on eBay, sheet of aluminium, but it's this very fine uh, stuff that's great for making fences and so on. But I reckon I might use some of this. Uh, examples being, just introduce a bit of metallic uh, into this somehow. So you could use it, for example, uh, cut a square out and then stick it behind the window on the other side so stick it in here and then you have like a metallic grill running across and and then paint that and add rusty effects to it and so on uh, and then all of a sudden you've introduced an easy way of introducing a bit of metallic uh, into that and it, it adds to the industrial feel of these buildings that's easily done and in fact uh, if I do more of these buildings I may, may well stick this on uh, and spray the whole lot together Won't I uh, don't think that's going to create any problem. So that's that. Or you can add it in later on. One idea there. Uh, another idea is you can create some kind of fence to run along here uh, with spare bits. You get loads of spare bits and accessories with these terrain sets, these buildings uh, from Mad Gaming Terrain. So that's another thing you can do. If you've got something sticking out like this, I could cut out a square and, and stick it along there. Again, to add in some kind of grill. Another option. Uh, and I've also been thinking about the uh, walkways here to cut out little squares of this and put it in between uh, the railings here. So to create a, a, a grill or grid effect on this. I think it's doable. There is a gap running all the way along here and uh, so I could cut out a long strip of this and tuck it in there cut it out and then I can stick it uh, on the posts in between so a bit of super glue here 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 and here and just have the one continuous thing and again paint it up rusty effect and all of a sudden you've introduced a, a bit of metallic uh, and you know a bit of detail added on to the, the main structure of this MDF terrain there's plenty of options keep a look out for that I may well do something like that with this terrain just add on accessories as I go along but uh, there it is that's the video so I'm going to press on with the rest of this terrain set. It's like an intro bundle that I've got here uh, from Mad Gaming. So that one's virtually finished. Just needs a coat of varnish. These steps, this walkway is virtually done as well. They tuck in there. Magnetizes up quite nicely. Uh, bring in the other building. And we can put this that way around. And that'll magnetize just in there where you start to build this terrain up. But there it is. That's the painted tutorial. Uh, for this mad gaming terrain here, the Hablock system, uh, from start to finish, how to get a, a quick result here by using some very fast techniques. And hopefully, we get to see this terrain in some battle reports in the near future. But, all right, just before you go, <laughs> I was talking about metallics. What I've done is I've started to introduce a bit of metallic by chipping up uh, the red just here. See that chipping effect? Just to give it a metallic kind of feel. Uh, and again, on the on the doorways here, you can maybe see that glinting in, on the camera. So, I asked another, and again, didn't take too long. The colour for that is just Stein Breaker. But I thought I'd just let you know about that at the end of the video. Uh, but that's another way you can introduce a bit of metallic 
uh, into this design and I, I, I'm a lot happier with that now. That sort of, when you add in chipping like that, it, 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 it sort of creates that metallic kind of effect and I think that looks way better. I'm right, very happy with that. So now we've got a stone kind of feel here and then now we've got a proper uh, metallic kind of feel with these red parts on the model. But that's it, just adding that bit on. Uh, it's optional, but uh, I think that looks a bit better with that chipping effect on the red. And then one more thing, I've just done this as well off camera. I've just added in that grid, uh, that puncture repair kit's aluminium mesh, like that. And I've just put it in, stuck it in, just quickly describe it to you. Just cut out the squares there, stuck it with super glue, and then uh, painted it with iron breaker. And that tones that silver down, and then put uh, the seraphim sepia wash all over it, and then just highlighted the, the middle bit of each here uh, with the iron breaker again. But uh, that gives you an idea, you can fill in the windows and get that kind of effect. And just introducing a little bit of metallic uh, into this, just that's easily done, and I think that's a great technique to add on. And I reckon I'll start adding in, maybe I can show you here, I've cut out this piece here, and then I'll slot it in between the gap, just there. And then I, I may cut out little plastic card blocks, or use some of the spare bits you get with this set, just to, stick in between these posts and it looks something like that on the other side and again easily done but uh, just some extra accessories you can add on uh, to your mad gaming terrain set